Yeah. Well, you do enjoy coming here, presumably. I mean, how does it compare to other sort of comic shows? This this one now is uh, is approaching uh, San Diego. So yes. the European version of San Diego, and it's grown immense. I think I came here first in about two seven, then two eleven, and the difference is remarkable from that time. And now, and this is just the beginning. I think this is just the beginning. For Brian, I mean, he's just doing it so well. I'm giving you a big plug out. <laughs> um, but uh, he's a he's a terrific bloke, but he also just has a clear vision of where to go. So this is. Uh, this is, and he works very hard, you know. Yes. I always run into him at uh, San Diego, for example, <laughs> because he's there watching and, and learning. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be here. I, I get a kind of a thrill to see how it's grown for him. Mm-hmm. This is very impressive. Yeah. A little chaotic today. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, we had a problem with one of the cameras. And so there's this line-ups of people, and Brian himself got on the camera, I'm and really he really took my photos. So. That's, that's the sort of man he is, <laughs> jack of all trades. Oh you so know. you mentioned San Diego. What's better? What's well, what's worse? Maybe the blistering heat of San Diego or the rain of London? <laughs> well, it hasn't been since I've been here. Uh, I have been here many times <laughs> when it rains, and it hasn't been when, when, when I was there. In the times I've been there in July, it hasn't been too bad. But in San Diego, we don't see the day. You know, we get we sort of land, and, and I've never gone as a free agent. I've always gone with the show. So you land and then get into this phalanx of security people and you get whisked around and you can't do anything without being told what to do. I remember once I was there with Anna Tall and uh, the fringe. And she said, John, let's run away. <laughs> so, so we sneakily got outside of the hotel and we're just shuffling along and we went and got a coffee and no one expects to see you out there. And we went down and we sat on a verge of grass opposite the main peak and we were giggling and thinking, how cool is this? And the executive producer, Roberto Orci, came along and said, guys, what are you doing out here? And then, of course, everyone, oh, like that. So we blew our cup. It was fun doing it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Do you miss working in the I miss that show so much. That was a... Um, <clears throat> I'd be really lucky, you know, to do a couple of shows that I think... For example, the, the experience on Lord of the Rings was a once in a lifetime. I, I would never expect to repeat that. And Fringe, the character of Walter Bishop was just a gift to any to any actor, but also the concept, the, the relationships that were created, which I think ultimately would strengthen the show, the, the, the family relationships between, uh, particularly between Walter and Peter, and then with Olivia and Jessica's character. So it was a total joy. I've done other great shows, but that one was so special in an actor's life. What is it about genre shows that appeals to you as an actor? They keep offering them to me. (laughs) 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 I I don't know. I had no idea at all. Um, I don't only do that. I've been back on stage a couple of times recently doing non-genre shows. I've just finished playing Henrik Ibsen in the play in New York, so that's not much. Well, (laughs) no. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. What is it? Tell me. What do you enjoy? You obviously enjoy the experience, but... Well, I, well, well here's probably the, the best answer to that is that I am often really interesting and complex characters. I don't mm-hmm. actually think of them as being part of a genre. I, I actually don't think in those terms at all. But they're fascinating characters, given the, the freedom to roam uh, into extremes of behaviour. And that's what Walter was, and, and to some extent that's what Henry Parrish and Denethor were. They're, they're all extremes of, of normal behaviour but two extremes, and that's, to me, that's a joy to work in that area. How do you feel about the direction of Sleepy Hollow, how it's going? Um, l- let me say that Sleepy Hollow has got a third season. Um, there, there have been massive changes. It, 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 it struggled in the second season. We all know that. But, but certainly Fox believed in enough to say, look, we will give you another season. Um, I won't be there. Uh, Catch a Winter won't be there. Landry Jones won't be there, and there's a new showrunner. And they've got a very simple brief uh, to reboot the show, go back to concentrate on the uh, Ichabod Abbey thing, which was the strength of it in the beginning. And I have, I'm so hopeful that it'll come back, you know, because it did lose its way. Yeah. What did you feel about your role and how they took, how, was it strange having to play the child of people? Oh, no. Young <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm <pretty> childlike. <laughs> <laughs> I loved the first season. I thought the first season was uh, was fantastic. And the second season, I I, I don't know. I, I just wondered what was going on. 
I really wanted what was going on. And, uh, and I used to spend a long time sitting around not doing anything. <laughs> um, so, but the first season was an absolute joy. And the people that pr created it, uh, Roberto Bocci again and Alex Hertzman, are dear friends, and I was so happy to work with them again. And I will again, have no doubt, you know, just that one would run its race for me. In Fringe, you um, the people played multiple characters all the time, but Walter was a multiple character every five minutes. <laughs> for you as an actor, how tough was it, like from one minute being upset to crazy to angry and to being like a father figure? Just like a real human being, aren't we? You know, because that's what we like. We, we do have, we change like quicksilver in our moods and, and the chemicals that run through our bodies creating different sensations. But also, Walter got to play, I think, 13 or 14, iterations of himself, not only Walter, which was very well known, but even within the main story, flashbacks, flash forwards, and then there was a period where he didn't have a brain, a period where he didn't have a son, and so they were interesting to track, and I used to have to say to, to my, my friends, the, the camera operators, I said, can you tell me if I'm in the wrong character? <laughs> <laughs> because it all happened so fast, there's not a lot of preparation time, there was, there was one point where, uh, at the beginning of season four, I think, where Peter actually wasn't part of the picture, he disappeared and, and was never there, but Walter was still there uh, and I thought, well, he, he won't be the same man without the, the hope of the sun, so what's he going to be like? I said, okay, he's going to be uh, OCDC. <laughs> and so I, I plotted all these things out of walking in straight lines and going around this and I'd, I'd have to say to the camera, just make sure that I'm doing this and not going back to the other one. I was so pleased when that ended because it was miserable not having the hope of the sun. I think my favourite version of Walter was in uh, the episode Brown Betty, the oh, musical yeah. episode. I just, I love seeing the <laughs> The opening like scene of that. The oh, uh, Candyman yeah. kind of song with the singing court. Oh, God, that was funny. There's a few of those. There's a few. <laughs> the Walter season. It took LSD once and he was seeing little dancing people around the place. <laughs> Black Umbrella LSD. Black Umbrella, yeah. Well. yeah, that's right. And uh, so, yeah. And obviously, uh, I don't know how to do those things, so I had to ask people what to do. <laughs> but I had plenty of people giving me advice, I can tell you. Wasn't that the great thing about Fringe, though? It's kind of knew it was a sci-fi show, and it could get away with those things because the fans enjoyed it. Did you enjoy knowing that you could have these crazy episodes every so often? I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. And, you know, the, the more that we, we, the writers and I got to know each other, the more that they would present things to me and the more like, yes, and then I'd add a little bit so that build that in. So it was a, a beautiful collusion, great collusion. It doesn't always happen, but in that one it did. That's why it's such a special role for me. How much was makeup and how much was like visual effects when it came to like making me a lot younger for that? Um, the, 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 that was, yeah, that was quite tricky. Um, well, what they, they do, it, it, it's it's a makeup thing, really, and uh, we had to work out a technique to do it. But basically, what they do is they put they pull you there and there and there, and so that basically removes your lines and, there, and uh, a longer hair, which helps cover up certain things. It also ha helps cover up the tabs on your neck, and then you just basically change your posture and attitude, so the attitude becomes much younger. And that was the Peter episode, which mm. was one of the all-time favourites. Oh, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful episode. Just wondering, as a slightly older actor, um, having like you. another second. Well, <laughs> uh, you should be talking about me. How does it feel having kind of like a second, well, not a second flush, but as kind of having, you know, interest from people who perhaps not seen your stuff before, and mm. suddenly you're, you know, you're. It's, it's kind of like moving into not just a different field, but you know, you've been doing, mm. you've been able to do different things. Mm. I mean, how do you feel? I think it's very, uh, it's a very positive story. Because we never know, do we? And, and you know how we can get through periods of our life where we think we get depressed or we go down and think, oh, I've turned 40, my life's over, whatever. You think this can happen to all of us. And, you know, you keep slogging on and, and, and sticking to certain principles. Somehow, hope lives eternal. <laughs> yes. But really, I'd, I'd, I'd had a, a good career until I was about 49, 50. But it was, you know, it was an Australian film and, uh, yes. and mainly theatre. Yes. And then Lord of the Rings came along and that presented me to the world, and that's kind of what you need, is that, that and then of course it's history, but very lucky. And then, then also, um, America's been very kind to me, because it's, it's enabled me to, to spread my wings, to do other things, to do the voice work that yes. I've been doing there, and um, I've presented a show there for Science Channel, 
so it's just it's a big market so there was room for me so I, I feel uh, incredibly lucky but I think it's a testament to not giving up yeah because I, all of us can get to the stage where we uh, say that's it I'm tired I've had it I'm finished look at my face it's <laughs> not what it used to be and but it's an attitudinal thing mm -hmm. it really is an attitudinal <coughs> thing and in my business age is not an inhibitor provided you fit and that's a fact you have to you have to get physically fit Speaking of that topic, um, Maggie Gyllenhaal recently made a lot of comments about this, about feeling that uh, being told comments that she was too old mm. to play with. What do you, what do you respond to that that issue with, with sexing, women? sexing to women getting older? In uh, I, would, I would respond in this way. Uh, that's a kind of a... I don't want to be too insulting about that attitude, but it exists uh, in the youth culture. But I do remember looking at the list of Emmy nominees a few years ago and they're all women in their 40s and 50s. And I thought, this, someone's telling the wrong story here. So those actors, uh, female actors, that can stay with it are now having really fantastic careers. And the actresses we love most are those women in their 40s and 50s, and, and a crop of very good young ones now in their 30s, or even 40s, but they, we still think of young. So it's changing. Do you believe there is longevity then if you're not like a du Judy Dench traditionally classically trained? I believe there is if you're a very good actor. If you're a very good actor. If you've gone through your life believing that I'll, I'll, I'll cruise through this because I'm beautiful and hot and all that, then it won't last. What for, for you? For though? a boy or a girl. <laughs> what for you? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I was Obviously. hoping someone would say that. <laughs> you can pay me later. <laughs> I've done that mean? too. <laughs> <laughs> I was dead out of play dresser once <laughs> but the worst part about it was he had to come on stage and I had to put all this weight on for it and he had to come on naked in the first scene and uh, it was <laughs> so shocking I was, well, it doesn't matter what it was but it's certainly a good way to lose your ego <laughs> well, obviously you're a very good voice actor do you see yourself moving forward with projects whatever comes along um, I, I enjoy doing voice work I do but I don't sort of think that's my direction in life because that's never worked for me in the past. I just sort of be available to what comes along. And I'm, I enjoy doing it very much. But I went through a long period where I couldn't get a voice job to save my life. I started off in radio drama, but then I couldn't get, <laughs> couldn't get, couldn't get, couldn't get anyone to look at me. And uh, then came back into it again. So you, you, you know, you, you just got to somehow or other put one foot in front of the other. And, and it's, it's hope can spring eternal. And if you keep that attitude, who knows what doors will open. Are you able to fund uh, like smaller films now? I recently saw you in The Mule. That's what you were absolutely amazing in that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, playing an Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a rough, he's a bit of a rough trade, wasn't he? You're the nicest guy in the world, and it just seemed quite funny to see you being oh, well, I was, Walter White. I, 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 I had the good fortune to work with Hugo Weaving, who was actually probably a nicer guy than me, and he was playing a monstrous character. <laughs> so that's just fun. That was there's no money in that sort of stuff it's, you do it because because it's uh, it's interesting work it's something different and, and oh look honestly they're, they're having the chance to, to, to work with you for example who I admire much and I'd never worked face to face with you that, that comes into it sometimes I did another show back in Australia at the same time a very successful miniseries called Devil's Playground which has just won all the awards um, but it, it, apart from being a superb story I was working with these people that I'd held in, in esteem all my life. You know, great Australians like Jack Thompson. You may not know who it is, but these are <laughs> they're gods to me. And uh, you get to do that as I got to work with Leonard Dimoy, for example. You think this would never happen. Talking so. about your voice work, you've just recently took part in the new Batman game. Mm. What experience was that like? It's been you should have come to the it. panel. We've just finished <laughs> doing it. <laughs> <laughs> We've been stuck up here. Oh. <laughs> um, and with me in the Batmobile. Oh, you know that. To, to enter that franchise, which has such, uh, sets its bar so high, it sets it, uh, Rock City sets its bar higher, and it has to, I think it does. So that was, I knew that I was working with it. obviously a very successful franchise, but, but with tr incredible creative people, you know, who took, it reminds me, I'll tell you what it reminds me of. When I did Lord of the Rings, the first thing that struck me was how high the bar was, and, and how everyone gave service completely to Peter Jackson's dream. That I'd never seen before. There were no complaints, nothing. Everyone went that far. And I had the same feeling about this, that everything was just pitched so high. And, and these 
creators did not want to put a game out that had a flaw in it. So we've been, they, three and a half years, I've been two and a bit on it. And so it's about to be released. So we'll, Will I you be playing it at all? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to. <laughs> That's you giving my age away. Scarecrow, maybe one Batman for this. You're just letting keep dying so you win. Yeah, yeah I know. No, no. In fact, it's fantastic. Scarecrow is a fantastic character, believe me. Uh, but that's the end of that. That's the trilogy completed. Although I've just been talking to the, the fellas down there and they said, we've got to work on another show together. I said, sure, let me know. I'll be in that. I just admire them so much. They're brilliant. That's the end of Why? Is this not a one-to-one? -one? It feels like it. Oh, it's a red paper. Gotcha. <laughs>